Hey everybody, Kestova here with another video for you. Um, in today's video, we're going to be talking about foundation design. Um, we're just going to be grazing the surface of foundation design. Uh, it's This is really a kind of beginner's tutorial on how to go about doing basic uh, footings or footing design. Um, because foundation foundations, although the equations are relatively the same, um, no matter what, um, but geometries and configuration of loading um, and footing geometry can um, really start to um, make it confusing if you really don't know the, the core principles. So we will be uh, talking about the core principles today for that reason. So what better way than um, teaching by example? So what I've done here, I've just drawn up um, a quick little example. So we have our um, our foundation. It's going to be a um, square footing, and you can imagine that there's some load uh, denoted as P being applied. Um, would be either from a pedestal or from a column load. Let's assume it's a column load with a footing below it, and then you have your soil. Um, you have your footing bearing on your soil below. Um, so we have a load of 1,000 pounds, and then we also have a moment that's being applied. Um, that could be due to maybe this is a fence post footing. They're usually not square, um, but let's assume that's what's happening. So you have this wind force that might be acting on the um, the fence, which then corresponds to some type of moment, some lateral force um, corresponding to a moment at the base of your post. So that's that's let's say where that's coming from. This is this is very typical to have a combined um, static downward force P and a moment applied to your to your footings. Um, I have this isometric view showing um, what we denote um, some components of the geometry. So we have L denoting this dimension, B denoting this dimension, and your this is how the moment is being applied. Um, on your footing geometry. To make it simple, I've made L and B um, the same, so we have a square footing, um, which I've denoted as three feet in each direction. Um, first thing we need to do, so I'm going to be teaching you two different methods today. Um, in reality, it is the same equations, but it's, it's two different ways to go about it. Um, I've learned both of them, and I use one of them for quick calculations back on the napkin, just getting some relative sizes, while the other one um, you can use that's a little more foolproof and designed to make sure that you don't miss any steps. So without further ado, let's get into it. First, we need um, our section modulus, which is going to be known as S. Um, and that equation is, if you guys remember my last video, um, talking about the steel manual, you can go into the back um, tables into the section properties of geometries, and you can pull that. Because basically, what we have here is you want to take your section modulus about this dashed line, about which the moment is acting, and it's the geometry of the face of the footing. So not the thickness, because if you think about taking this as like a sponge, and then you try to curl that moment over the sponge, how would that be acting? You would you would start to pick the sponge up. So it's about this geometry. And what that means for us is you have S equals BD squared over 6, um, where for us, we have B equaling capital B, that's that dimension, and then D equaling L. So that gets us broken down into S equals BL squared over 6. We know that B and L are both 3 feet. So 3 times 3 squared over 6 gets you 4.5. Um, that's cubic feet because you have feet here squared and you have feet here. So let's remember those, those units as we go through this. So we have L, B, static downward force, P of 1,000 pounds, and a moment applied of 100 pound feet. Um, and then we have a section modulus of 4.5 cubic feet. Method 1. You have, so we want to find in this equation um, the maximum and minimum stress that is being applied from the um, forces above down through the footing onto the soil. Because 
with every foundation design, you're going to have um, a geo, most often a geotechnical report, and they are going to provide you with an allow what's called an allowable bearing pressure, and uh, of the soil class that you're that you're building on. So a very typical one would be like um, allowable equaling two thousand psf. So that is the bearing pressure, the maximum allowable bearing pressure of your um, soil, not 200, 2,000. Oops. Um, and we want to make sure that our foundations, uh, the forces that are acting on our foundations, do not exceed this value because that what that would mean is that um, the soil would begin to fail and our footings would start to slide into the soil and just displace the soil and you'd have settlement and sinking. Um, you And obviously... You don't want that. So that's why we do this. That is what we were designing for, and that's what we're checking for, is to make sure that our um, stresses are within and under that allowable stress. All right, so method one, stress, which we know is um, force over um, an area. So pounds per square foot, um, or PSI, pounds per square inch, yada, 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 continue, continue. Um, so for this, we have um, two components. You have your static um, downward component, which is your P um, of 1,000 pounds over your A, which is just the area of your footing, which is just L times B. So 3 times 3 is 9. So that is 1,000 pounds divided by the area of your footing. So 1,000 over 9, that gets you a PSF. Then you have plus or minus... M over S. So this is where your lateral um, load gets taken into account into your um, into your stress design. So your moment is M, your S is your section modulus. That your moment is um, pound feet, and then your section modulus is feet cubed. So when you cross out a foot from each of those, that gets you pounds per square foot. Okay, so you have both of the units the same. The plus and minus in this equation denotes when you plus these two objects or these two variables together, that gets you, or variables, parts of the equation together, that gets you your maximum uh, bearing pressure. And then when you use subtraction, it gets you your minimum bearing pressure. So when we break it up, as you see here, max gets you 133 PSF and your minimum is 88.8 .8 PSF. If we were to say that your allowable bearing pressure is 2,000 PSF, we are well under those, so we are good to go. These are these are very light loads. Um, that's the reason why it's not even close to a, a typical allowable bearing pressure. But nonetheless, we're good. Now, I do want to warn you that this equation only works when um, your M over S is less than your p over a if it's greater than and you subtract you're going to get a negative value so i guess one good indicator is either what i just said if this is greater than this this equation this method doesn't work um which also translates which also translates into um if your minimum bearing pressure is negative is a negative value then um then you know that this, this equation is a bust. You can't use this equation, which actually dumps you into method two. But for anything, for any M over S, and any time that your minimum bearing pressure is positive, this method works completely fine. Method two. Um, we are going to start by figuring out what E is, uh, making sure that E is less than or equal to L over six. E is your eccentricity. Your eccentricity is equal to your moment applied over your um, static downward force P applied. Same thing, just look at those units. Moment, pound foot, over pound, that breaks down into foot. So E is a distance. So 0 0.1 feet is less than or equal to L over 6. Your L is 3, which is 0 0.5 feet. So this holds true. Our E is less than L over 6. That means we get to use this equation. Um, maximum bearing pressure, P over BL, 
um, parenthesis 1 plus 6 times parenthesis E over L. Um, that breaks down into 133.3 PSF for max bearing pressure, the same as above. The difference in this equation when finding um, your minimum bearing pressure is replace the plus with a minus, very similar to what we did above here, because they're they're derived from the same formulas. Uh, run that out, gets you 88.8 .8 PSF, the same as above. Good. Um, this works. This is a more foolproof method, uh, method, because what it does right off the bat is it warns you if you can be using this equation or not. So when E is greater than L over 6, this equation is a bust, and it actually bumps you into a new equation, which we will be going over ne in next week's episode. Um, so stay tuned for that if you'd like to know more. But um, for now, uh, these are two very, these are two methods that I use every single time I design foundations. Um, and I hope you guys take something from this. Um, it's pretty useful. Uh, the one closing note that I will say is that the reason I showed you two different methods is that you will see throughout my studying of foundations in school and in life or er, in my professional life is I've seen both of these used and I've also seen another method used. So it, you constantly question whether you're doing it correctly or why that person is doing it a certain way and you're not following them because you've been taught one way, you know, pretty rigidly. And it's like, that's, that's all or nothing. This must be wrong or strange and you question it. So there are multiple ways to go about this that get you to the same formula. Um, so that's why I've shown you both of these here today. And yeah, um, in next week's episode, we will be exploring what happens when your eccentricity is greater than L over six. Um, or in other terms, in terms of method one, when your M over S is greater than your P over A. So that's where the two changes will occur, and we'll get into that next week. Um, please like and subscribe. Um, as always, uh, I know school is in full swing. You know, we're in October here, so I know you guys have exams. I know you guys have plenty of homework to do. Please feel free to um, give a comment anytime uh, with any questions you may have or, or any areas that I was unclear about. I'd be happy to sit down one-on-one -on -one or, you know, go over an additional problem that someone wants to submit. But until next time, I'll see you guys.